Right, Charlie, well, we're out with you boys today. Tell us a bit about what you guys do and where you're based. So we're based in between Oxfordshire and Northamptonshire. It's sort of our country. Um, we do go into Gloucestershire quite a lot as well. Right. We're sort of here, there and everywhere. Um, we are OWNRJ Vernon. Um, what is it you guys do most of the time? Bit of everything. So yeah, <laughs> what else in the last few days? Mean, there, is, bit there, of everything. there isn't a lot we can't do. Um, yeah, so our main thing, we do a lot of baling, to be honest. Baling's our biggest, but yeah, chopping grass would be, chopping grass and maize would be our biggest, our biggest job. Yeah. Right. So what's the setup here then? Because, well, we've been here a couple of days, we've seen a mighty jag, and we've seen a, a darker green machine today. We have. So what's, what's, the, what's the crack there? So we run a class Jaguar um, for our farm grass, so all dairy farms, beef farms, um, and well, we do a lot of work for AD plants as well with it. Um, that's Ollie's main forager. Right. Um, it's an 870 Jaguar. Um, and then here for AD plant work, we have a John Deere 9 900i, which has got a bio drum in it, so 64 blades, because we chopped down to 4 mil. Right. Um, which, as daft as it sounds, makes almost a thousand horsepower forager die in right. swaths. So, so do you use the one more than the other then? Or? Uh, the 9900i would do a lot more chopping a year, um, right. purely because this one AD plant we're on now grow 2,500 eggs of maize and about just shy of 2,000 eggs of rye. It's a lot to get through. It's a lot to get through. <laughs> so you can tell why we all go insane yeah. <laughs> here, just pushing grass up and down, up and down. So what's the stuff you're chopping today then? Because it's heavy, thick stuff. It is, it? yeah. So this is just straight rye. Um, forage rye for AD plant, so it's grown on a rotation, so we, this time of year we're chopping it and then straight into the rye stubble we're then growing maize. As soon as we chop the maize in sort of October, September, we're then straight back in with rye. As soon as the maize is off, the drill's in the ground putting rye back So you don't stop there really? It's just literally, it's, there, there's never not a crop in the field, basically. <laughs> so yeah, this is, it, it's very busy, very busy. And you're pit man? I, I, uh, I, I've always been pit man, I love being on the pit, but this year I've had to sort of be, uh, seeing as like I said, I'm operations yeah. manager, <laughs> I've had to drive a bit of relief forager driving as well. <laughs> I was going to say, t tell us a bit about yourself, Charlie, because I mean, really, we're interviewing a famous face here. Oh, aren't we? behave! <laughs> I mean, you've got your own YouTube channel, and we know yeah. you've been to. Well, you've been you've been out to Australia. I have you? been yeah. Australia, New Zealand. I am. You've done all of that, Mister Mister Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. So obviously, I met you. When did I, I met you years ago. Years ago, did yeah. Did, we did the agri-social chat video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That was a long time ago. A long time. Ago. I used to feel old. Um, yeah. yeah, so I have obviously I'm from Gloucestershire originally, which is where I used to do a lot of my YouTube work back in the day. Back um, in the day. Yeah. Uh, and then 2018, 2019 I moved over to Oxfordshire um, to work for a farm which was it wasn't a contractor, it was just a like general arable farm called uh, Colworth Grounds. So, I remember that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I did four, four years there, I think. I got bored, because it was, it, <laughs> I love contracting, and everyone can back me up. Tearing around country roads with your beacons <laughs> on at two in the morning, with like seven of you in a line with silence trailers on, you just can't be it. Also, I'd like to point out for the YouTube video here, um, <laughs> this clamp, I have been doing manager things, so I've had to push up about 15 loads at once, hence why I'm driving around like I'm a dog with two tails, right? So everyone, just before you start hurling abuse, just <laughs> Just think off. about what yeah. this man's been through. I've, last I've had to have like 15, 25 tonne pusher trailers sat there while I've been just driving around in a Volkswagen Amarok being in charge. So just shut up. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, what were we talking about? Yeah, tractors. tractors um, yeah. So yeah, we run all John Deere tractors, um, deal with Farrell. Right. Uh, Farrells are, I mean, credit where credit is due. As much as I love shouting at Charlie Phipps for, for, spe for getting to spec sunroofs. Look, <laughs> ultimate, ultimate edition 215 when he forgot to put a sunroof in. Um, they are brilliant. They, their backup is second yeah. to none. We've had times where the joystick shorted out and within literally, you can ring them up two hours later, they're in the yard or they're in the field. 
they've got my John Deere JD link. They can track exactly where you are. I've rang them up because I had I've, I've had many little ad blue problems, and they've turned up in the field, and within three hours of phoning them, we're going again. Right. And if yeah. it is, we've had problems where our old 6155 had a gearbox issue and they couldn't fix it in the space of like two days so they brought us a 7310 RCUs until they fixed it like they are absolutely brilliant and I mean to be honest in my opinion a tractor's a tractor really as much as people say oh it's green it's fent it's massy they are nine times out of ten there's some things they are better at some things they aren't but if you have a dealer that can back you up and can bring you and get you out of any sort of trouble at the click of a finger. You're they're the tractors to you're going to want to have. Yeah. We've got these huge trailers here today, one of those. <laughs> so they are, there's only five of them in the world, actually. Uh, they are K2 uh, pusher trailers, but they're 25 tonnes. They've got full way cells and everything, which is for this job is brilliant because it's all by the tonne. So you haven't um, got to mess around weigh bridges either, and you just... <laughs> yeah, it's, well, we, we use the weigh bridge as well, but it's, oh, all, it's right. also a good way, like the Forager. The Forager's got, this one's got full harvest lab on it, um, so it tells you the exact dry matter and everything, um, but it's a good way of calibrating it. You can just fill a load up and shout out the window to your trailer driver how much is in the trailer, they tell you, and then you can put it on the screen. I've got a 6125R, uh, which I absolutely love. I used to have, well, I've sort of, driven I've been very lucky I've I, there wouldn't be many tractors that I haven't driven really but yeah. I for versatility and for every purpose that like I think this tractor is the perfect size there, there isn't a single job I can't do with this tractor put it that way yeah I've had it on a on a, a sumo trio I've had it on a butt rake I've had it on those chrome triple mowers or groupers it does this tractor would have done best part of 12,000 bales of baling last year, like it's done everything. And the coolest thing about it, which is very aftermarket, if you flat the revs out like that, open this, there's a little button. If you look at the grills, it blows the grills out. So, trick of the trade that. <laughs> That's the main feature that is, of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little, not many people know about that. That's a little like party trick. <laughs> what about your book rake? Uh, Buck Rake is uh, it's a cherry product, I think. I am an Albert man through and through. I love Albert attachments. Um, I think they're brilliant. There's nothing really wrong with this Buck Rake. It's perfectly fine. But you've had to have a pay rise to sit on it. But it's not an Albert, <laughs> yeah. So I get paid like benefits to use it, basically. I just, yeah. I, there, there's some things in the world that I absolutely hate, like Kramer telehandlers. Whoever invented them should stop and burn them all but uh yeah, yeah albert attachments are incredible everything they do is to such a high standard it's, it's a good butt rate to be fair it's built very well um it's lasted long it's clamped right this will amaze you i reckon this butt rake has pushed the best part of 10,000 acres of rye and about 20,000 acres of maize in its life and it's only three four year old <laughs> It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's done a lot of work. Yeah. So talking foragers then, what's, uh, I mean, what's the go-to? Does he prefer the one to the other? Should we not mention this or <laughs> is this so, a dangerous subject? So or? I'm going to give you my opinion. Uh, I have always been a bit, I don't, I'm, well, I used to not know anything about foragers. I used to think I did. I was like, yeah, I, I've driven a forager for two runs of the field. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I used to love Fent Katanas. I was going to say, well, you saw a lot I, of those I like used to, I, in the day. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of work with katanas. Uh, to yeah. drive, I think they're the best forager. From a driver's point of view, to sit in it and to drive it, they're so comfy, the joystick's lovely, and it's just a lovely forager. To own, <laughs> you buy it for about the same price as a small island, and you sell it for about the same price as a Freddo. <laughs> like, they just, they're... they're Re resale value is shocking yeah so from an owner's point of view they're not great um from being in australia class jaguars i think they are the best of the best i don't think you can you can say what you like i think for a, a, a driver an owner and an output point of view you can't beat a class jaguar if that's an 870 or a 990 they are just brilliantly designed everything's really good on them john deere they do some things that are just so backwards 
like they do some brilliant things with the foragers they do other things that it's like why have you done that like put a squeaky seat in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were planning on doing the interview in the forager earlier yeah. but after after experiencing but, five minutes of the squeaky seat we're like, no, this is going to be impossible <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go find Charlie on the pit yeah. so it's a bit quieter in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's I, I, it's one of those things. Too. Everyone has their own opinion of what they prefer. I think those John Deere foragers are very good. The technology on them is second to none. That whole harvest lab thing, I mean, the things that it can tell you, how the hell it really it is. It, it just is from smart, a, a magic eye on the spout that yeah. registers the crop that goes through. It's next level. It is yeah. unbelievable. And John Deere, like, even with these tractors here, the thing we've got our maze drill going at the moment that you did a good job of trying to film earlier because he was hiding around I did here. <laughs> <laughs> I did race around to try and find him. <laughs> um, that's full section control, which is run through the screen. And like the, the way that it is, that's quite a heavy bit of grass. Um, the way that it's designed and the way that John Deere's technology is, is just incredible absolutely incredible hold on i'd like to point this out <laughs> there's going to be some really nice shots of tom filming the forager driving up the field i had to drive his car while he sat in the back of it so that is just true. putting that, that out true. there <laughs> i should get commissioned for that <laughs> i did drag you into that <laughs> yeah I was like, Charlie, you're doing anything that's useful. You're like, no. Yeah, I'm going to have to get you back. I'm going to leave you clamping. I'm going to go to the pub. <laughs> uh, so tell us a bit about your mowers then. So, well, when you are doing something useful, you sat on them sometimes. Yeah, no, it's not very often that I'm doing anything useful. But I sit on the mowers a bit. Uh, we got two sets. We got a set of crone and a set of class. Um, the set of class are uh, a lot better for what we do with them. They, um, the, we got a brand new disco move on the front which is, I mean, you can't fault it. You can mow over any, any terrain and it cuts brilliantly. It's got that whole new bed pressurization, which I think the old ones had as well, but they're nowhere near as good. So for example, here where there's loads of stones, you can adjust the taps on the front mower so you can set the bed pressure harder so that it either doesn't rise up over flat grass or if you've got loads of stones you can set it where it's very jumpy so right. if you hit a stone it will flex over and rather than plow through and smash a blade off oh, I see. which yeah. for us here like some days you can go through 50 blades a day yeah we've got a set of crone uh, triples as well which have groupers on so when we're, when we're mowing rye we uh we group it all so it saves having to rake it um which means that you don't knock the heads off it as well and you don't lose as you you do lose a bit of wilt but it works even to itself out really. So we came out to see you last night, you were doing a bit of work at a job you have at a dairy farm. Yep. So it's not just the huge trailers you run, you've got the slightly smaller ones for yeah. getting around dairy yards. <laughs> so we've we've got three K2 curves, um, two sixteens and an eighteen tonner. Uh, brilliant, brilliant trailers. They're all in. We've got a bit, if you can't tell, we've got a bit of a uniform here. We've got John Deere's with blue side lights and black trailers. I was going to say, what's with the side lights? They look quite smart, to be fair. They, to do. You, they do look smart. They do. <laughs> I mean, some people think they look stupid, but to be honest, I did it. We did it for Ollie, actually. I said, I'm not going to take credit for it. I'll give Ollie credit where it's due. We had a big uh, charity tractor run for cancer research. Right. So we put them all in for blue for cancer research. Oh, and then okay. we thought they look really cool. They do actually look so really cool. So now every one of our tractors has got a chrome exhaust and blue side lights. So yeah, but yours is next level. You put them everywhere. They're not everywhere. just side lights anymore. I got a bit carried away. <laughs> I got mirror lights, roof lights. Yeah, I basically just a driving Christmas tree. But, uh, and then I, yeah, I'm also very sad because my air horn broke yesterday. So you can't make as much noise now. So it was two tone, now it's just one tone. <laughs> which is really sad. But yeah, so I work for Ollie Vernon, who, um, yeah, he'd be, be one of the biggest contractors, he would be up there, one of the biggest contractors in this area. Yeah. Um, and he's very young, although his hairline says otherwise. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's, to be fair, I was chatting to Ollie earlier, he's, he's done well really. Considering he started, like when I first knew Ollie, he had an absolutely 
I can't use the word I like to use. Very bad condition case Maxon. And that was it. And he used to just drive round with a set of chain arrows on. Yeah. Uh, everyone thought he was an absolute lunatic. <laughs> and now he's got a Forager, seven tractors. It is yeah. how it starts. Well, cheers for having us out the last couple of days anyway, Charlie. No, it's been good to see you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, maybe, we'll maybe try and come out and see you when you've got these balers going then, if it's, if it's a will. big operation like you say it is. <laughs> balers, chasers. Yeah. All right then. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be busy being busy. We have got three, just over three and a half thousand eggs of maize to chop this year as well, so I'll be busy. Yeah, we'll have to come back out and see you then at some point, but yeah. just the last couple of days and we'll Only see you soon. Only if you drive a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Deal. Right now, deal. <laughs> <laughs> right now. See you soon, mate. See ya.